Hi there, this time we're gonna have some fun with some problem solving, creative process and also various technologies. So basically what we are trying to achieve is to use all of our knowledge to click automatically on anything on a given website. It may sound very simple, but the key here is a word automatically. So basically we have to manage somehow to move our mouse and click in the middle of a given element. We have to consider here a couple of variables. The first one is a position of an element relative to the viewport. The next thing is an actual size of this element because we need to move our cursor to the middle of it. And now the last two things is an actual window size and also a scroll position. Oh, and there is one more thing to consider, which is a actual position of our cursor. Alright, so the first thing is to move our mouse. This is very simple because we have a keyboard master app which allows us to move our cursor. We can specify here a click and also movement in horizontal and vertical axis. It means that for example in this case if I type here 50 and run this macro, as you can see my cursor were, were moved to right here because there is an option relative to the front windows corner. In our case it will be better to switch this to the current mouse location. So whenever I run this macro, my cursor moves down by 50 pixels. So at this point we have to somehow calculate how to move cursor above our target. First we need a selector of a given element and then we can access all of those variables. Let's have a look right here. Let's say I'd like to go to, to this link and then click on it. So probably I need a data asset C attribute. With this I can use document query selector and then pass this attribute. As you can see we have our element. Next we can use var to create a new variable and let's say it will be target. Probably you may thinking why I'm using var instead of let or const, but in this case I like to test this script and also run it multiple times. With let and const it won't be possible because I will get an error. Anyway, right now I can use get bounding client rect in order to read x, y, weight and height. So basically is all of I need about this element. And what's more I can access scroll y and also window inner height. As you can see those values are exactly what I have described here. Right now the question is how we can connect Keyboard Maestro with our browser and also with JavaScript. I don't know if you know that but there is an option called execute a JavaScript in front browser. What's more uh, that works both in Chrome and Safari. But actually in my case I'm using Arc which is a brand new browser and because of that it doesn't work with this action. So we have to figure it out how we can actually run JavaScript in our browser. And the answer here is a Apple script. Right here I have a macro which executes a Apple script snippet. In this case I need two variables. First is for a JavaScript snippet and the second one is for result. Next I set the first variable to the value from Keyboard Maestro. It will basically grab a snippet from Keyboard Maestro and pass it to the script. Next we will activate an arc and then use execute JavaScript. In our case we'd like to create a variable called result which will be assigned to the ify. In this function we will run our snippet and every value which will be returned from this script will be passed right here and right after that will be copied to our clipboard. And after that again we can ask keyboard master to set js snippet result to the clipboard value. And what's more there is an action to remove a value from our clipboard so returned value from this script will be available only in this variable. Right now everything we need is to use this macro and before this macro we have to set a variable with a script and also after this macro we need to access JS snippet result in order to get values. So let's do this right now. We will only need this macro right here and now we can close this window. As I've mentioned we need to set a variable called JS snippet. Next let's try it out. Let's say for example we will lock my nickname. 
If I go to the browser and open a console and press a shortcut to run this macro, as you can see we have my nickname. It looks like AppleScript is working. So right now let's try to access a result. In Keyboard Maestro, in order to read variable, we need to access it like so. In this case, the only thing we need to do is to return a value. If I go to the browser and run the script again, nothing will happen in my console, but as you can see, a value is right here. So far everything is working, but there are a couple of things we need to take care of. The first one is our mouse position. The thing is that mouse position can be just read from JavaScript, but there is a way to set a event listener for mouse movement, and also we can move our mouse with keyboard maestro. We need to move our cursor even by a single pixel. It will trigger event listener and give our JavaScript access to our mouse position. Now we will need an element and event listener, but there is one more thing we need to keep in mind. Let's go back to our draft. At this point we need to specify a mouse position, but this position should be calculated based on our viewport. I think that the best idea is to create a element which position will be fixed and its size will cover our viewport. So wherever our mouse will be, we will be able to access accurate coordinates. Let's say it will be element with a class mouse over cover and position set to fixed. Next we need to specify inset to zero in order to make its size to cover our window and then its Z index should be big enough to be on top of everything and then we can append this element to our body. The next step is to create an additional element in which we will save a current mouse position. Right after that we have to add both elements to our DOM and also create an event listener for moving a mouse. It will be responsible for storing current mouse coordinates in our containers. We will put a console log right here and also add actual event listener. If you are thinking why we append these variables to window object, it's because our Apple script. Because our snippet will be run in Ify, it will create a function scope, which means that all of these variables won't be available in the future and we will need them. At this point, I think it's a good idea to test our script. So let's go back to the browser and run this macro. As you can see both in console and also in left top corner we can track current mouse position. And what's more as you can see I can scroll down and because our invisible cloak, current mouse position and scroll are independent right now. I think that we can continue. We need to pause our script for like half second and now we need to specify additional script where we will create a result object and save within it everything value we need. The first one will be our current mouse position. Both of those values we may read from our container. Next we need to find our target element and read its position. At this point we have to also make sure that this element is visible and if there is a need to scroll our page we will do it with scroll to method like so. And the last thing will be to access position of this element and also remove our cloak. And the last line is to return JSON string which will be available in Keyboard Maestro. And the script needs to be run with our macro. The next step is to read those values by using syntax like this. As you can see I'm creating a new Keyboard Maestro variables and setting its names and also values by using JSON value compact keyword. As you can see I can access JSON snippet result and then access its properties. And the last thing to do will be to move our cursor to a proper position calculated based on position of our target element and our current mouse position. Actually at this point we have also take care of uh, this variable which is dm move selector. It will contain a selector for our element. Before we go back to the browser, I have to mention that there is a need to scroll our window before moving our mouse. So in this case a pause will be right here because we need to wait for the scroll. So to sum this up, 
we specify a selector, then create a cloak and even listener to track our mouse position. Next we are scrolling to our element and wait half second. Next we use keyboard maestro to move our cursor by one pixel in order to trigger this event listener callback. Next we run another snippet, which is able to read current mouse position and also calculate a position of our target element. After doing so, we need to extract required values and then move our cursor to this element. Let's go to the browser and test this out. At this point I will just remind that we are trying to click on this link. So let's scroll up a little bit and then run our macro. Something is not working and uh, probably it's because our script is not activated before we move our mouse. So right now everything should be working as expected. It looks like it works like a charm. Let's try this with a, another selector, like for example this one. And after updating this selector, we can go back to the browser and then activate this macro once again. As you can see, something is wrong because our selector is wrong. Actually, it should be better to access this selector. And right now, let's test it once again. Everything is working because our element is a block element, so we end up right here. If you are thinking why I can just like uh, select this element and just trigger click, it's because sometimes it is not available to trigger click event or even focus event. Let's take a look at this. We have here a event listener on body element. If I click somewhere here, I will be able to see this event. As you can see, there is a is trusted property, which is currently set to true. It because that I was responsible as a user for triggering this event. But if we will use JavaScript to do so, as you can see, is trusted is set to false. It means that this property may be used to block most of the interactions from JavaScript. Now, if we go back to our macro and we will specify some selector like tags, which is connected with element available right here. And also we will change uh, the last step, not to just move, but also click. We will be able to see that this event will be trusted. And as you can see, there is a confirmation of what I was saying. At this point, I think that we have completed our challenge. Right now we have a macro, which may find any element of our page and then move our mouse automatically and click on this element. It may be a link, button or even input. What's more, we can also use keyboard master to insert some text. So for example, you can specify a selector for an input and this macro will activate this input and can even type something within it. After all, everything what we have done here was just a play. We were able to solve a couple of problems with some creative ideas and even using technologies like Apple Script and connecting them both with browser and also JavaScript. If this video made you think or teach you something, you can safely leave a subscription on my channel because I'm gonna publish even more videos like this one. Until then, thank you for your time and see you in the next videos.